then you will see it. You will be it. You will get the whispers. You will know what to do, when to do it more and more clearly every day. You just got to be open, be receptive, be attuned to the highest possibility and not to what other people say, not to what you've conditioned to believe, not to how things have worked in the past. You got to go nonlinear, like a rocket ship. My question is actually very similar to the other one um, about demolishing the pillars, um, but I can't seem to relate it to the situation. So you say like that you can, n n there's no way that you can be stuck. There's always a, a way through it. Like for me, it's my job. So I'm doing like a kind of corporate job. Um, and as soon as you were talking about demolishing the pillars, like I felt like I wanted to cry because I knew, okay, this is it. I need to um, quit my job. But how do you do that when you have to pay rent and things like that and you can't find another way to make money that's in alignment with your purpose? Well, first of all, you don't have to pay rent. You can be homeless. <laughs> uh, you can live with your mom and your dad. You can live with a friend. You can live in a community where you contribute so much love and light and, and things or whatever that... Um, that somehow that's not part of the reality there. Uh, there's so many ways that you could live without having to pay rent. So first of all, I'm not saying that's the route you should take, but I'm saying do expand your possibilities because often it's a lack of faith and vision that lead us to keep ourselves contracted and limited. So we got to recognize that all the abundance that's available to us, which is based on the premise that we are creating our own reality. If you're drawing a picture, and you got to draw yourself in it. Why would you draw yourself stuck in the picture? You know, so yeah. it's, it's a lack of faith that you have probably that leads to a lack of vision. Mm -hmm. And lack of vision will pose these very reasonable questions to you. Like, what about this? I can't find a job that I resonate with. That's also bullshit. What do you mean? Yeah. How, how do you know? Um, I, I quit my job and I started my coaching business, but I couldn't make money. So then I got a job again. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, uh, it is similar to the other woman's question. And my answer is also going to be similar. And it is, in my opinion, the swiftest way to deal with this is up your alignment to your truest intention, because this is an issue of self doubt. It's not an issue of practicalities or inabilities. Mm -hmm. Do you do you do I practice my faith before quitting the job and then I'll find a way out of it? Or is it a case of quit the job and, and then practice the faith? I'm trying to practice faith now already. Sweet. No, it's a good question. Um, well, you can do both. You have to feel it out for yourself, what the timing of it is, what's relevant. Um, but no matter what, you can practice faith now before you quit your job. And when you mm -hmm. practice faith, sometimes I use the example of like, you know, don't, don't jump off a building if you don't really believe you can fly. Because someone said you should be able to believe that you can fly. You know, uh, your belief system is not going to support you. You're going to crash and fall. So it's like that. You do have to have enough faith to carry yourself through the transition phase, especially because it's easy enough to say, to have an inspiring moment. Maybe you watch uh, an inspiring video or something, or someone that talks about this topic and you're lit up for like 30 minutes. And in those 30 minutes, you're canceling your job, your relationship. You realize you don't need any money to survive. You trust in the universe, you fuck tying my camel. I don't have to tie my camel. Um, but then when the transitionary elements come into play, yeah, the logistics of the things that appear, the self appearances, the self appearances, the transitions, then can you maintain that level of faith? Can you continue to stay above the clouds of doubt? Yeah. If you can, okay. then great. You can quit your job right now and something will show up for sure because your belief system will support that transition. But if you, if you go like, 
yeah, I got this. Okay, resignation. And then you go like, oh, fuck, I should have never done that. Ba -da -da -da. And you're negative again. And you're not maintaining faith. You don't believe in the universe, in yourself, that you're creating your reality, that something shows up for you always. If you don't believe in that higher trajectory, uh, you're going to recreate, but now from a deconstructed structure, you're going to try to sort of scramble together what you can, and it's not going to be very pleasant. So it's important that you do align to the universe. Now, granted, it will help you a little bit. It will support you if you do make a choice like that, that is bold, because God does favor the bold. You will be supported in that. Even if you start doubting, it typically won't just like rip everything away from you because you couldn't maintain perfect faith. There is leeway there. There is slack there. But at the end of the day, it is your belief system that will determine the reality you experience. And the creator, no matter how gracious it will be for a while, it cannot go against your free will. So if you insist that you're unworthy of finding an amazing job or an amazing way to live or an amazing the abundant coaching practice, if that's your truest, highest desire. If you insist that you're not worthy of that, that you cannot do that for whatever reason you think is true, then even the creator himself cannot oppose your free will. It wants to. It would love that's to. What it would love to take care of everything for you, but it cannot if you don't let it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I say, give everything to God. Give all your problems yeah. to God, everything. If you can do that, you can attain a high level of faith and you can allow the Creator's grace to just show up moment to moment to moment without any or hardly any insistence upon your part. Insistence upon this can't be, insistence upon it should be this way, insistence upon it can only come through those avenues, insistence upon I really want this and nothing else. You know, but you can, in that openness, you can allow the grace to really present you with the highest options available to you. And the vision can return of what's possible. You can start seeing in terms of possibilities and third level creations instead of only this or that. What is the third unseen option? Always. What's the third unseen option? If reality A or choice A and choice B both don't feel ideal, don't choose either. Up your faith until you see the perfect combination of both realities included in a single choice. And it will come to you if you up your faith levels. But if you stay sort of lingering in the murky little thought paradigm that you've created for yourself, which you may not even see as negative, because compared to a lot of other people, it might be very bright and positive and sweet and kind and nice and loyal. Blah, blah, blah. But compared to the creator, it's a pile of fucking shit. You limit yeah. yourself. I don't care how spiritual you are and how much your friends admire you for everything you're able to do and create. It's a pile of shit compared to what's possible. So... No offense, um, but, mm, you, true. <laughs> but we don't grant ourselves full access to infinite vision. We just don't believe it's possible or something. We're just, we have this allegiance to, to low level vibratory thought forms. And somehow it pleases us. Somehow it seems real. Somehow it, boop. But when we up our faith levels and we give everything back to God and we trust, the grace comes in, it cleanses our vision. We are able to see parallel realities, multiple possibilities in any scenario, view it from all possible angles, humanly possible or non-humanly possible, and proceed from that level of clarity. And with that mm -hmm. accelerated passion and faith and power, that's possible. Yeah. So you got to up Yeah, your because what... You go ahead. Sorry. The way you're describing it is like, you know, this mixture of surrender and passion and intention at the same time, like surrendering, surrendering it all to God, but also yes. knowing I have a higher vision for my life. So it's sure, just understanding but, doing both of those at the same time. Well, but they're not separate. Your the highest vision for you is the vision that the creator has for you. So if you give it all up to the yeah. creator and you trust in that highest self, then you will see it. You will be it. You will get the whispers. You will know what to do, when to do it more and more clearly every day. You just got to be open, be receptive be attuned to the highest possibility yeah. and not to what other people say, not to what you've conditioned to believe, not to how things have worked in the past. You got to go nonlinear, like a rocket ship. Escape the stratosphere of limitation and marvel mm -hmm. in the infinite space of possibilities. 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you do that? I feel like I can do that right now. That's yeah. That's good. But can you do it for half an hour? Or can you maintain this faith? Half oh, an hour is good, by the way. Half an hour is pretty good. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. But, but you got. I think it. it's like. I... Sorry. Well, catch. Um, you want to learn to catch yourself when you start like. Hmm. And you want to somehow snap out of it. Go for a walk. Put on another session. Remind yourself. Give that back to God as well. Whatever technique or permission slip you want to use. Use it in the moment that you feel yourself start doubting. And because literally that's you in process of recreating, redrawing the same limitations around your character. But you're drawing it. But you don't catch yourself enough. And so therefore, you only notice it once you've drawn the whole structure. Now you're like, I'm stuck, which is not true. You drew it. So you want to catch yourself as soon as you start drawing, dancing, low vibes. Mm -hmm. Don't believe it. And surrender in that moment. Yes. Okay. I, you resolved that surrender um, slash manifestation paradox for me now when you said that the creator has the highest vision for you anyway. It kind of helped me to not see that I have to keep setting intentions and creating my reality and um, cho choosing my highest excitement and desire. If I surrender, it surpasses all of that because the creator has the highest vision. So that helps. Very good. And you might still find yourself going through the motions of getting an exciting idea and taking action on it. But it will feel very natural. It's not contrived like I need to create my vision board. Nothing wrong with that either. But to at least... You're to... on my vision board, on my screen, on my phone. <laughs> well, look at us here. We're interacting. Um, so, yeah, in the surrender, all that is available to you. And you can also give all your problems to me. Okay. <laughs> whatever works for you, whatever permission slip. If God is too vague, if source is too abstract, give it to something that represents something close to that for you and just hand it off. Yeah, because I, whenever I feel like those moments, I just picture your face and I could feel the energy that I got in those silent transmissions from the meditation retreat. And that really helps to just uh, like be able to tune into that energy. Totally. So yeah. I'm going to try that. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Have fun.